right now on Aesthetics, inside the Lightning's third jersey reveal. Stick around for behind the scenes video you can only see here. This is not a place I ever expected to be walking around. It's the hallway between the Tampa Bay Lightning's locker room and the ice inside Amelie Arena. I even stood next to Steven Stamkos, Nikita Kucherov, and a truly towering Victor Hedman. So how did all of this happen? In the days following the retail store leak of their new third jersey, I got an email from the Lightning's VP of Communications. My first thought? Don't shoot the messenger. But much to my surprise, he was calling with an invitation to shadow the Lightning's production crew as they prepped for the official jersey unveiling. Exclusive access only for aesthetics. Yeah, even I was amazed. All to give you an inside look at how this new sweater came together. It's an aesthetic special presentation. Behind the Bolt. Inside the Tampa Bay Lightning's 2024 third jersey launch. The last time I was invited to cover an NHL jersey launch was over a decade ago, when the Dallas Stars introduced their green jerseys in 2013. Afterward, I stood on stage with Mike Madano and Jamie Benn with a dozen other reporters. My trip to Tampa last month was very different. It was quiet, secluded, and I was the only person outside the organization allowed to see what was going on behind the curtain. Hey guys. Wednesday, January 17th the Lightning's new third jerseys had arrived. With the countdown on to the official release, it was media day, a chance for the video and photo crews to capture players wearing their new uniforms so they could make their hype videos and social media promo graphics. And there I was, to capture and share a behind-the-scenes perspective on all of it. A surreal moment for a Tampa kid who grew up loving this team. In fact, there I am on June 7, 2004, shortly before the Lightning raised their first Stanley Cup and I cannot believe that that was 20 years ago. But enough about me, let's dive into all of the details of this new uniform. And we'll start with the man behind the design, my one-on-one -on -one interview with the Lightning's chief venue officer, Kevin Priest, who oversees all things retail for the organization, jerseys included. So this was this was kind of a work in progress. Um, you know, obviously we did the black "quote unquote" disrupt the night jersey in eighteen, and there were things that we talked about doing during that jersey process that we tabled, and we actually went down a couple of different paths there. Right, we were looking at trying to be innovative. We're also our alter ego was trying to be conservative, traditional hockey, this, that, and the other. We felt like you know we kind of did the innovative thing, and then after winning the two cups back to back we really felt like we had kind of solidified our, our legacy a little bit, or at least the value of the franchise, right? Like we're a legit hockey team in a non-traditional market, and we had a lot of great stories to tell. One of those stories is a lost tradition, the victory stripes, a feature of the Lightning's original uniforms, supported by team founder Phil Esposito, who told me all about them in this 2017 phone interview. I wanted underneath the arms, to have those like little stripes. I was gonna ask you about those. Little stripes, nobody else ever had it. Nobody. And I wanted it so that when our guys scored, you put up your arms and you saw it. And I thought it would be a different thing and start a different tradition. The victory stripes place was solidified in lightning history when they won that first cup in 04. And here, eagle-eyed viewers will note that the sleeves only contain half of the original underarm stripes. On the original black jerseys, there are six. White, blue, gray, gray, blue, white. And on the sleeves, we see only the top half of that design, white, blue, gray. But if we combine the arms with the legs, check out the socks. Together, they match the old underarm stripes exactly. Both of the Lightning's reverse retro jerseys proved that Adidas could implement those victory stripes, but that is the only time that we've seen them. Unfortunately for fans, when the team underwent a logo and uniform redesign in 2011, those stripes were thrown away completely, as was black as a primary jersey color. Black is probably our most asked for color. 
Uh, it matches. That's why you see a lot of our thirds. I think every one of our thirds, except for two, have been black. That's what our fans want, right? So we, we surveyed our fans. Uh, and we also wanted to look good on TV. We wanted our players to like it. Coach Cooper, is he loves black. Um, I think he would have us in black from head to toe with no tones if, if he had to get the pick. The, the elements of it were trying to be cool and stylish and speak to our heritage, but also kind of put a modern look to our mark and our brand. We'd always talked about moving the, the shoulder patch to the, to the crest, uh, and this seemed like the right time to transition that and not try to introduce something new, but to, to, to reinforce kind of who we are and, and make it a little bit bolder of a statement. That's why you see a little bit of a modification, but once it got bigger, it needed a little bit more, yeah, more detail, a little bit more kind of pop. And then, you know, with obviously the new elements kind of adding that ridge to the, to the bolt was really strong and then doing it in the blue and the white, it really accentuated our core lightning, but then it pulled through the tradition of the mark. Another traditional element the team wanted to bring back was the collar ties, last used on their Reebok jerseys. But we didn't want that to be a big emphasis, so that's why we went tonal. It's very subtle and, and kind of classic looking. That attention to detail really helped this jersey shine, right down to an element you'll never see on the ice, the design inside the collar. Doing the years um, with the colors of the jerseys that we wore, it all kind of came together, right? Sometimes sometimes you just get lucky and you're like, okay, this makes a lot of sense and all the pieces came together. And then, like I said, with the other, you know, we, we looked at, you know, do we do something special with the name plates or whatever? We, again, wanted to stay very classic hockey. You know, typically if you look at our, our jersey systems and our uniform systems, they're very clean lines. They're not complicated. Um, we, we wanted to make sure that we didn't try to overdo it either. When we did the original Disrupt the Knights, we wanted to go with something very specialized on the helmet. Um, there was some trepidation throughout the hockey world about being a little too aggressive there. We ended up going with our traditional helmets. We went all black, obviously, but we didn't do anything special. So this gave us a chance to add even more modernization to it by going with a matte black helmet. And really with the, with the system, the way that it looks, and you've already mentioned this in your earlier release, we are going with the reverse retro multicolor gloves because it pulls all the colors through so good. And then the pants. We actually designed different pants and different gloves and we're playing with that in the different mock-ups. And then someone on the team was like, why aren't we just using those pants? Because they're perfect. And then the gloves, the gloves are just amazing, right? Like the different colored fingers and all that stuff. Like it's just so much fun. But the, the helmet really let us flex some different muscles that will speak to a different audience, but just be cool and different. In addition to the new gear for the skaters, goalie Andre Vasilevsky also has a new setup for third Jersey Knights, including a new mask, pads, and gloves. And by the way, he got the message about the secrecy surrounding the day's video and photo shoots, so he was a little wary when he caught sight of me in the hallway. Oh shit, there's uh, the guy who fucking <laughs> So now that the secret's out, when can we expect to see these jerseys finally hit the ice? It is late in the season, but the Lightning announced a launch weekend that kicks off tonight, February 15th, and includes the next two games as well. There are also four more nights in March, as well as the regular season finale, on April 17th. Just to end on a different note, right? Like, so it's, that's not something that we would normally do, but we figured, you know what? To add that extra date in, let's have some fun with it and, and, and do it for our fans. Beyond that, the Lightning confirmed this jersey will be worn for at least two more seasons until 2025-26. Now, some fans have wondered if third jerseys would be paused next year when Fanatics takes over the NHL, as we saw with Reebok in 2007 and Adidas in 2017. So, some good news there. One more thing to mention while we're on the Lightning. While I was in Tampa, the team officially released their new Gasparilla jerseys. Gasparilla is the city's annual pirate invasion and boat festival. It happened two weeks ago. The team started blending it into their branding in recent years in the form of warm-up jerseys. But since the NHL banned warm-up jerseys this year, the Lightning decided instead to sell them as limited edition fashion jerseys. 
They only produced 1,904 of them to commemorate the year of the first Gasparilla Festival. It's a fun jersey, and they sold out quick. And with that, we'll wrap up with one last look at the Lightning's new third jersey. It's rare to get this kind of access to an NHL jersey launch, so I have to say a very special thanks to Brian Breesman for the generous invitation, and to his entire video and photo crew for putting up with me peering over their shoulders all day. They are all true pros. I'd always heard good things about how the Vinick Sports Group operates, but that day I got to see it up close for myself. I also want to thank all the members of the Aesthetics channel with a special stick tap to the icons. As always, your support is hugely appreciated. And that's all I've got for now. Be sure to like and subscribe for more hockey jersey related videos and coming in March, episode three of my Mascot Mayhem series. Thanks for watching and see you next time.